on. Today we'll be looking at redox and in particular writing and balancing redox equations. So if you look at this question over here, we see that we're being asked now to write balanced half equations represent the following changes, tin 2 to tin 4 ions, iodide ions, iodine, and calcium to calcium ions. Let us go ahead and start that process. If we're converting tin 2 to tin 4, that's SN2 plus to SN4 plus, it shows that there's an increase in the positive charges. If there's going to be an increase in the positive charges, it means now that the electrons will have to be lost. So the tin would be losing electrons now to actually increase the positive charge right here. So it could represent it to say that SN2 plus will lose two electrons, so minus two electrons to form SN4 plus. But can we show it like this? No, it is incorrect to write it like this. So what we have to do now is just rewrite the equation to show that SN2 plus will form SN4 plus and give off two electrons in the process. If you look at the oxidation state or the oxidation number of the tin in tin 2 and tin 4, you will see that this is plus 2 and this is plus 4. Because the oxidation number is increasing, meaning that it's getting more positive, it shows that oxidation is taking place. So SN2 plus is being oxidized. All right. So we're going to look at B now. And that's the movement of iodide ions, so iodine. Let me switch out the marker a little bit. It's not going to look that much different, but it's giving me ease of mind. So this is A and B. So we have iodide ions, and they're being changed now to iodine. How is it that I have two atoms over here, and I just have one atom right here? I need to balance these charges, so I need to have two iodide ions being converted to iodine. So over here now, this negative charge is indicating that there's a surplus of electrons there. Over here, there's no charge here, so it's neutral. So how do I get rid of these electrons here? So I'm going to say two iodide ions will lose two electrons to form iodine. Again, it is incorrect to show electrons being subtracted from something. So you have to indicate that two iodide ions will form iodine, a molecule of iodine, and give up two electrons in the process. So you have oxidation taking place again. So the iodine is moving from the minus one oxidation state to the zero oxidation state. So there's an increase in the oxidation number. So iodide ions are being oxidized. There's another thing now that we need to do whenever we're writing these um, half equations. We have to show the state symbol. So because these are ions, I'm going to assume, I'm making an assumption, that these now are present in the aqueous state. So you're gonna have SN2 plus aqueous, SN4 plus aqueous. So we're just putting in the state symbols for all of these ions. And for the iodide ion, we're doing the same thing. So we're assuming this is aqueous, and then we're assuming now that we're going to form um, but it can be aqueous iodine. So when you're writing a full equation or a half equation, you're supposed to write your state symbol. So again, this represents an oxidation process, so the electron is being added to the right-hand side of the equation. So the last process that we should represent on the board now is a change from calcium to calcium ions. You must be wondering why they 
A, B, and all the way over here, C. I'm wondering myself. So we have C, and we have calcium, this metal, and it's being converted to ions. How is it that I'm converting this calcium metal now to calcium ions? Obviously, I'm losing two electrons because this is neutral. There's no charge here, and that's a full plus charge. So calcium is losing two electrons to form calcium ions. But it's incorrect to write it like this. You can't show electrons being subtracted from something. It is also incorrect right here. So we'll have to rewrite this equation now to say calcium will form calcium ions and give off two electrons in the process. So this is the correct way to write this equation. So this is showing oxidation. Right now, I'm going to change that question and show you some reduction processes taking place. All right, so as you can see, I've changed the question. So now we're looking at the conversion of sulfur to sulfide ions, chromium six ions, or chromium three ions, manganese seven ions, manganese four ions. Let us represent those processes. I'll start with this kind, this side of the board this time. So A, we have sulfur being converted to sulfide ions, S2 minus ions. You can see we have zero charge here, and we have a surplus of negative charges. So that means that electrons were added, because electrons are negatively charged. So electrons must have been added to this now. So sulfur plus two electrons would form the sulfide ion. So here, sulfur is now in an oxidation state of zero. And here is an oxidation state of negative two. This is reduction. Part B, we have a change of chromium six, so Cr six plus aqueous is changing to Cr three plus aqueous. We can see now that the amount of positive charges is reducing. So the only way the positive charge can be reduced is if electrons are gained. Because remember, protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. So if you increase the amount of electrons added to, say, the chromium-6 ions, then of course it will decrease the value of the positive charge. So we can see there's a difference now of 3 between chromium-6 and chromium-3. So chromium-6 plus APS plus 3 electrons will form the Cr-3 plus APS ion. So we're moving from an oxidation state of plus six to an oxidation state of plus three. So there's a decrease in the oxidation number, and this is, of course, reduction. The last example now is the manganese, seven ions, so that's Mn, seven plus, A plus, and it's being converted to manganese four, and yes, this is another oxidation state of manganese, so I meant four plus. The difference between seven and four, that's three. And there's a reduction in the charge which indicates that electrons are being added to something. So Mn, seven plus, A plus, plus three electrons would convert now to Mn, four plus, A plus. So we're moving from a plus seven oxidation state to a plus four oxidation state. So you can see the value of the positive charge is now decreasing, so this is of course reduction. There's another thing you must note. Whenever a reduction process is taking place, the electrons are always added to the left-hand side of the equation. Whenever we have oxidation processes taking place, the electrons are being added to the right-hand side. So we're going to pause the video again, and I'm going to change the question to do the final set of redox equations. See you soon. As you can see, I've changed the question yet another time. So in this question now, we're supposed to identify the oxidizing and reducing agents in this process right here, in which iron 2 is reacting with um, per the permanganate ion to form manganese 2 and Fe3+. Plus. So in addition to identify the oxidizing and reducing agents, we need to write balance half equations to represent the oxidation and reduction process. Let us begin. 
Can you just change MnO4 minus Mn2 plus? No, you can't do that. In order to change it now, you actually have to liberate the manganese ions. And how do you liberate the manganese ions? You have to use something now to remove the oxide ions. And that is why the acid is in that equation. So manganese, the MnO4 minus plus H plus ions. Although I know it's eight, I'll soon show you. Will form up for some electrons. Let me just add the electrons and then plus five electrons would form the Mn2 plus ions plus four water molecules. How do I know to put eight H plus here? Because I know that water would have been formed, H2, right? And in the water now, we have four oxide ions right here. So we need to have four oxygen atoms over here. So I'm going to put the four right here. So I'm going to put four in front of water. This four is also multiplied by two to form eight hydrogen atoms over there. So over here, I need eight of them. Now, manganese in the manganese ion is in the plus seven oxidation state. How do I know that it's in the plus seven oxidation state? Let me just work it out quickly for you. So Mn plus four oxygen is equal to negative one. And then follow the oxygen rule, which is that it has a value of negative 2 unless it's a peroxide or superoxide. So if you follow that rule, then it's going to be Mn minus 8 is equal to negative 1. So Mn is equal to plus 7. So that is all I knew. So if I want to change manganese now from the plus 7 oxidation state to the plus 2 oxidation state, I need to add 5 electrons, which is what happened now by adding the five electrons on the left-hand side of the equation. So this represents a reduction process. What is happening to the iron in the equation? The iron now, Fe2 plus, is being converted to Fe3 plus. So if you're converting Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, you're increasing the value of the positive charge. If you increase the value of the positive charge, the only way that is possible is if you take away electrons. So Fe2 plus aqueous will lose an electron to form Fe3 plus. I'm going to remove these values that are on the line here to avoid confusion. So Fe2 plus losing an electron to form Fe3 plus. Remember, we cannot write it like that, so that's wrong. So we have to rewrite this equation as Fe2 plus aqueous will form Fe3 plus aqueous and in the process, it will give up an electron. So you can see that iron is being oxidized. So again, a reduction process took place because the electrons were being added on the left-hand side of the diagram. If you see the electrons being added on the right-hand side of the equation, I mean, then you know that this is a, you know, an oxidation process. Here's a discrepancy right here. We have five electrons here, and we have one electron here. How is that possible? It is not possible. You can't have something giving up one electron and something gaining five. You can't just break electrons out of thin air. So what we'll have to do now is to multiply everything by five. So we'll now have five of this, five of this, so every single line by five. So in the end, we'll end up with five Fe2 plus ions losing one electron each, so in total five electrons will be lost and will form five Fe3 plus ions. So to satisfy the requirement of this equation in terms of balancing masses and matter on a whole, you would need five Fe2 plus ions to lose one electron each and we give this permanganate ion, which is a manganate 7 ion, this one now would accept 5 electrons, the 5 electrons that are being lost down here, and would convert now from the Mn in the plus 7 oxidation state to Mn in the plus 2 oxidation state. So in the question, I'm going to go over there right now. In the question, it says to identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. So based on the half equations written over there, oxidation is taking place right here and reduction is taking place right here. The manganese, this manganate ion, right for the manganese in it, 
this is caused in the Fe2 plus to lose its electron. So this is the oxidizing agent. So this is the oxidizing agent. It's also called an oxidant. And the Fe2 plus now, this is the one that's losing the electron, so it's reducing something. So this is a reducing agent. So we've fulfilled the requirements of this question in that we've identified the oxidizing and reducing agents and we've written the balance half equations now to represent the oxidation and reduction process. So to be clear, this is the oxidation, this is the reduction process right here. So this is reduction. Alright. And let me about that because this is what I wanted to underline. And this is the oxidizing agent. And this process right here is the oxidation process. And this is the reducing agent. So what that equation is reading is that five iron two ions will lose one electron each to give five, ion, five electrons the permanganate ion to reduce it now to Fn2 plus and produce five Fe3 plus ions in the process and of course water molecules are produced. Okay? So that is it in terms of Reitman balancing, redox half equations and redox equations on a whole. You've been learning science with Mrs. Stevens Massey. See you for the next video. Bye.